So going into a little bit more of that nutritional psychology, if changing our diets was simple, we would all eat perfect diets. Um, but it's much more complicated than that. There are a lot of deeply ingrained psychological reasons for eating that include food, comfort, um, convenience, pleasure, temptation when you see like the cookies at the checkout lane, um, habits, things that we are used to eating and we like to eat, or our cultural preferences. And while we know that a good diet can improve mental health, and I'll go over a few more strategies in the next slide, there's diet culture. And diet culture is kind of like telling a child not to do something and then the child wants to do that thing. It can promote, you know, eat this, not that, or clean eating culture that demonizes and makes certain foods dirty. Um, so in that way, it can actually do the opposite. It can promote food restriction and then binging on food, uh, anxiety around meals and get togethers, and the shame of eating bad things. So this is stressful and decidedly bad for mental health. And this can be hindering us more than helping us. So while that good diet may stop some of these cycles of emotional eating, being obsessed with having a good diet can actually fuel it. So let's go over some ways to make eating a healthier diet. Okay, so instead of making huge changes, the most sustainable way to build a lifestyle is pretty common sense. Start by changing one thing at a time, not a whole diet overhaul. The process is far from linear and it will fluctuate as life does way more than in this graph. Um, you need to have self-compassion for yourself and know that you're on the track. You're not winning and losing because if you set up that sort of structure in your head you're going to be feeling bad and when we're eating for our microbes we have to take them into account surprisingly well maybe not after everything you've heard today but our microbes actually control our taste buds so if you eat a diet that's high in sugar sugar hungry microbes are going to protest if you start to take it away and this is actually where cravings come from. But after a while, as the community shifts with new food habits, so will your taste buds. This is kind of like why when you cut out sugar, at first nothing tastes sweet. And then after a while, even the most slightly sweet things taste really good and the things you used to love taste overly sweet. So one of the best strategies to start with is adding in foods rather than focusing on taking things out. And this is just uh, focusing on the foods that you actually like and finding ways to snack on fruits and vegetables um, and not wor worrying so much about calories. Because if you're worried about calories, you're always having this sort of tally going on in your head. So focus on the foods you like. I love carrots. I love snacking on carrots, especially while I'm cooking, because by that point, I'm already hungry. And if you don't like carrots, don't force yourself to eat carrots. Another strategy is to bulk up your meals with nutrient-rich foods. My favorite way to do this is adding canned lentils to my rice, um, because I could eat an insane volume of rice. Uh, it doesn't really make you feel very full. So when I added the lentils, the fiber and the nutrients make me feel satiated before I've overeaten. Another really great way to do this is to hide your extra veggies. Um, you can put them in soup. You can put them into smoothies. If you're making some sort of pasta sauce, you can uh, cook your vegetables and blend them up. And that's just ways for you to add extra fiber, extra antioxidants into the things you're already eating. And if you put some vegetables inside your smoothies or fruits, you don't really notice that they're there. Spinach is a great one because it doesn't have a really strong taste and it's not really fibrous. 
lastly, when you're eating for a lifestyle, junk food is part of a healthy diet. Um, go out with your friends for ice cream, eat the cake at the holiday gathering. Um, this is all part of making sure that you're not restricting yourself from things. And then you won't feel the need to eat a whole bunch because it's just a part of your life. In this economy, eating is expensive. Feeding yourself, expensive. Feeding trillions of microbes, more expensive. So some of the strategies that you can use are buying fruits and vegetables because they're cheaper and just as nutritious because they're picked at peak ripeness and then frozen immediately. And these are really good for like the soups and smoothies and the sauces I mentioned on the last slide. If you can buy staples in bulk, things like beans and oatmeal, go for it. Don't, I know some people don't always have the space or it's really heavy to bring home, but if you have a few easy and quick go-to recipes that you know that you can whip up and they're nutritious, try to buy those type of food. You can also go to some of the more discount uh, grocery stores rather than going to the really expensive ones because the dried food will be the exact same and is often much, much cheaper at those other places. Another trick that I like is upgrading those lower nutrient convenience foods. So the things you go to when you had a super long day, you don't feel like eating, maybe it's a box of mac and cheese. You might look at that and say, mm, that's bad for me, but you can add beans to it. You could add tofu, you could add chicken or ground beef, you can add broccoli and all sorts of other things to like really up the nutrition level because let's be real, we're not always going to be making everything all the time. And you'll feel good about knowing that you're feeding your microbes, even when you don't feel like feeding yourself. So another strategy is learning new re recipes for things that you already have and not leaving the recipes for you know something new and super complex. I have the app Supercook, which is amazing and no sponsorship here, but you can basically add in everything that's in your pantry and you can search based on certain foods which recipes you want and you can filter them by time health price so it's a really great app to engage with another tip is to buy seasonal because seasonal produce tends to be cheaper know what a sale price is so you know that you're buying something that's a good value and one of the ways that i use I do this is by using the app Flip, which is all of your local grocery store uh, flyers. So you don't actually have to have the paper and you can cut certain foods out and it'll put them into a shopping list for you. Lastly, I know a lot of people like to take a bunch of different types of expensive supplements and multivitamins, but if you're generally healthy, a lot of these supplements don't actually too much. And sometimes they can actually hinder the effects because if you're taking a bunch of minerals, for example, sometimes your body actually decreases the amount it's absorbing. So you want to make sure that you're getting the most out of your food and bioavailability is a huge part of that. 